Hey there, Wastelanders, and welcome back to War Games News Radio. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at another Fallout Wasteland Warfare faction review, and this time around, we're taking a look at all of the new survivor units that have been added in the Capital Wasteland wave. Now, there are technically 12 new survivor units in this wave, but in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at the first six of them, those that can be found in the Washington Personalities box set and the Capital Companions boxes. So we're not going to be going over the Riley's Rangers units in this video, but rest assured, we will be covering that sub-faction, if you will, in a new video coming out very soon. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the Washington personalities and the Capital Companion units and all of their strengths and weaknesses. First things first, all these units benefit from the Survivor's Faction Special Rule, which gives each unique unit a plus one strong armor token at the beginning of any battle. The faction card still hasn't been updated even after all this time, but this rule was changed in Narada back in like 2020. If you want to check out my full review of the faction rule, then click on the video popping up here. First up are the three units found in the Washington Personalities box, and that's Moira Brown, Lucas Sims, and Three Dog himself. Everyone's favorite megaton shopkeeper Moira is a handy objective-focused unit with a couple tricks up her sleeve. She's an above-average objective runner, hacking, lockpicking, and searching on her intelligence of 7, and she has access to use expertise quick actions. Moira's not all that terrible in combat hitting on fives with pistols, but her thrown weapon and melee skills take a bit of a hit with an agility of four and a strength of just three. She is super squishy though with just four hit points and no physical armor at all, but she does have one point of energy and radiation resistance, which isn't too bad. Moira gets two frag mines and her signature mole rat repellent stick for free, both of which are nods to her quest line in Fallout 3. And while the mole rat stick is highly situational in Wasteland Warfare, it does absolutely tear through the little guys, auto-killing them at the end of a round if they take any damage from the weapon. And her Wasteland Survival Guide rule lets you re-roll a result or redraw a card from the Wasteland deck once per activation. Again, this is highly situational, but a pretty handy buff nonetheless. Moving on to Three Dog, we have another fun utility character, although not quite as handy as Moira in my humble opinion. He's not the toughest character around with 5 hit points and 1 physical and 1 energy armor, and his shooting and melee skills are just so-so, hitting on 4s. But he is a surprisingly effective grenadier because he hits on a luck skill of 5, which actually gets bumped up to 6 because he gets his signature headgear for free. But as much as it pains me to say, that's about where the interesting stuff ends with this year unit, at least for me. His objective skills are only okay, lockpicking and searching on fives, but he lacks any hacking abilities. And even his broadcast rule is, again like Moira, very time and place dependent. This lets him give out a free green accuracy die to any friendly model making a charisma test within his black presence range. I guess this is most useful for battle cry tests in the most broad sense, but I think we all kind of know my opinion on battle cry. <coughs> the hands down, all time, number one, with a bullet, worst rule in Fallout Wasteland Warfare. So between Moira at 52 caps and Three Dog at 62, for me, the smart money is going to be on Moira nine times out of 10 when it comes to utility units, at least in this box set. And last up in this box is the Sheriff of Megaton, Lucas Sims. While Three Dog and Moira are lacking in any real firepower, Lucas makes up for this in spades, hitting on sevens with rifles and sixes with melee. And that high perception of seven actually gets bumped up to an eight because Lucas gets his signature Sheriff's outfit for free. And it also comes with some other excellent buffs like plus one endurance, so in most cases, plus one hit points, and a plus one to charisma as well as an extra green die when making rifle attacks. The hits keep on coming with Lucas as he can make quick attacks, and his Observer Special Rule lets you give him a reaction token at the end of his activation once per game. But Lucas does not come in cheap at 112 caps, but for the money, I'd say Sheriff Sims is fast becoming one of my favorite new combat units on the Survivor's roster. Moving on now to the Capital Companions box set are the three models that I'm the most excited for in this entire wave, and that's Butch, Sharon, and Fox. While Butch starts off Fallout 3 as your childhood bully, he can later be recruited into an adventuring pal and personal traveling hairdresser for our lone wanderer. Butch has a long move range of red and an even better charge distance of green, and couple this with his high melee skill, and he makes for a really good up close and personal scrapper. He comes equipped with the Pip Boy item, which is new in this wave, and gives a free quick action at the beginning of each activation, which is crazy useful, especially for Butch because he has access to quick attacks and move and charge quick 
actions. Butch also gets his Switchblade for free, which normally isn't anything special with just one base damage and a blue special effect die with a chance to ignore one point of armor. But because of his wounding special rule, Butch grants an extra black die when making melee attacks as if he had a strength of seven or higher. And on top of this, his Switchblade gets bumped up to a base damage of two because of his Tunnel Snake's rule special ability. He has a few other honorable mentions on his stat card, like a high search skill of seven, two plus one strong armor, and six hit points, and he can make a battle cry with a pushback of orange. But all this makes Butch a pretty pricey unit at 132 caps, but keep in mind this does include all of his standard equipment. Moving on, we have Sharon, a ghoul gun for hire, and the subject of some pretty fucked up Fallout fanfiction online. Look, I'm not here to kink shame anyone, but come on, gang. We can do better. For me, Sharon is the definition of an all-rounder. His strong suit is obviously combat, hitting on sevens with pistols and rifles and fives in melee. But he's also a somewhat decent objective runner in a pinch, lockpicking and searching on fives and hacking on threes. Sharon might not be the toughest unit around, he's just got five hit points, two physical, and two energy armor, but he is a ghoul, meaning radiation is not a worry for him. And he's damn near affordable at just 69 caps, and even after adding his signature combat knife and shotgun, he only clocks in at 87 caps. And his custom weapons aren't half bad either, they're basically the standard combat knife and combat shotgun, but with an added green accuracy die when attacking models with no unit type. Now this one threw me for a loop, at least at first, but basically, Sharon is really good at killing humans and or humanoid-like things. Units that are considered to have a type are things like robots, creatures, dogs, synths. Now this might need some clarification down the line, but I'm about 80% sure of my reading on the rule at this point here, so feel free to light me up in the comments if there's something glaring that I missed. And last but certainly far from least is one of my all-time favorite companions from any Fallout game, and that's Fox. One of, I believe, only two friendly super mutants in all of Fallout 3, Fox is a surprisingly well-read and non-hostile super mutant from Vault 87, and he packs one hell of a Gatling laser punch. Strength-based skills and sheer survivability are where Fox shine. He's got one job, that job is killing things, and he does it pretty darn well. He hits with big guns and melee weapons on a strength of eight, and he can also make battle cry tests with a pushback of yellow. He's an absolute tank with nine hit points, three physical armor, two plus one energy resistance, and because he's a super mutant, he's completely immune to all radiation damage. He also has access to quick attacks, giving him even more options when it comes to lashing out at the enemy, and his lucky special rule ups his survivability even more by giving you a 50-50 chance of not removing him from play if his hit points drop to zero. And keep in mind that this mechanic can come up multiple times in any one battle, but just remember that you can only use it once per battle round. But those downsides are just fine by me, as the rest of his stats and rules work perfectly for a unit whose one job is to put other units down. All of this makes Fox one seriously expensive unit at 141 caps, and that's before giving him any equipment, and let's be honest, we're gonna give him the Gatling laser, and not just that, his signature Gatling laser, which is a significant improvement over the base model. It adds one black damage die at long range and an additional black damage die at close range, and it absolutely thumps. It does have one less walked fire shot compared to the regular Gatling laser, but that is a small price to pay for way more damage output. But it is more expensive at 45 caps compared to 30 for the original. Well, there you have it, Wastelanders. Even more survivors for you to add to your forces and tackle whatever the Wasteland might throw at you. I hope you enjoyed this video and that the information helps you in putting together your survivor forces down the line. If you like what you see here on the channel, then hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our next video coming very, very soon. And if you really want to support the channel, then follow the link in the description to our Patreon channel or hit the little join button here on YouTube, where for as little as $3 Canadian per month, you can help us make more videos more often for you to enjoy. Enjoy. Plus you get all kinds of kickbacks like your name on the credit roll here, entry into giveaways, early access to select videos, and all kinds of other fun stuff. So thank you again for watching and stay tuned because as always, WGNR will be back.